I think the the ninety minute uh, catchment is a is an interesting interesting system. It's an interesting imp- implementation, I think. Um, and uh, just sort of lo- lo- looking briefly on Google Maps within that ninety minute catchment from from Chelsea's Cobham uh, Academy setup um, is is Portsmouth, and that's where where Mason Mount is, was was born. Um, I don't know whether that was where he was uh, he was discovered, so to speak. But I, I do remember him being when I was reading through. Uh, I do rem- I do recall um, him, you know, coming into the Chelsea Academy at a very young age. I think it was around five or six. Um, he may have even been in in the pre academy. Uh, I think uh, I, I remember reading that as well. Um, but he's one of the, the the other case studies you've got in in the in in the the Dream Factory. Uh, and you um, and I was reading something last night uh, by Adam Newson, who's um, the you know, one of the, the Chelsea reporters at Football London. I, w- I was just intrigued to to, to learn about the the route that, that Mason Mount has has essentially taken from his childhood years to to becoming uh, you know an England regular um, a, a, and a Chelsea regular, a Champions League winner, um, and 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 one of the the best English players in the country. I mean, from your case study. You know what? Who who are the who are the main drivers really behind you know developing Mason Mount that we know today? Yeah, so yeah, Mount is another one. I I, I interviewed his dad, um, uh, and as, as well as a few uh, Chelsea coaches and scouts, um, to kind of really tell his story uh, to the point at which he was scouted by Chelsea and then signed on for them. The reason being is that I, I guess the crux of this book, what I wanted it to be, is is. It is answer the question of this, how this young um, upcoming generation of English footballers, which of course includes Mount and Rashford and Foden and Trent Alexander Arnold, how were they created and and also at what cost? So looking at the the downsides of it all, cost in terms of finances and cost in terms of the attrition of the young people. And yeah, Mount was somebody I wanted to, to look at because uh, I find his path quite interesting. Um, he was spotted out in, in Portsmouth. He was a huge Portsmouth fan uh, as a boy. He used to go all the time with his dad. Um, he was spotted at six, and um, you can't sign exclusively to an academy until until you reach the under nines level. So he was still able to train with uh, with um, Portsmouth, and I believe he also trained with Southampton for a bit as well. So he had options, but Chelsea were there first, and kind of made presented themselves quite quickly as his most ardent suitors, um, and made 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 real kind of sure of their their desire to to acquire him. And when the time came to choose just one club, even though he was a, such a huge Portsmouth fan. Um, so I spoke to um, Tony Mount about um, how Mason was scouted. I also spoke to the scout who spotted him, a guy named Bob Windsor, a uh, Chelsea scout. Um, and it was a bit of a, a slightly underhanded trick that they used. Um, it certainly wasn't in contravention of any any rules or anything like, or any ethical codes or anything like that, but it was um, a little bit of a wily trick of the trade whereby um, he was spotted playing for his local team, a team named Ball Hunt um, uh, in Portsmouth. Uh, I believe it was his first ever time playing a competitive game on, on grass. He was so young and so so fresh. Uh, he was six years old. Um and the Chelsea scout Rob Windsor approached um, Tony Mount because um, Tony has a background in, in non-league, non-league football in, in the south of the country, so he was quite a well-known figure around uh, around the local scene. So uh, Rob Windsor, the Chelsea scout, knew who he was. He approached him and said, "Is that your boy, the number seven? Tony said, "Yes." He said, "I'd love to take him up to Chelsea." Um, Tony Mount said, "Well, basically, um, he's he's just six years old. He's only just started playing. I'd rather leave it, to be honest with you. He's uh, he's enjoying his football. Let's just." leave it and see where it goes and um so the Chelsea scout went away accepted accepted the uh the response um but then a couple of weeks later Tony Mount gets a call from Boar Hunt's manager who's very excitedly telling him that they've been invited to a tournament at, at Chelsea's Cobham training ground the whole team are going to be going up for the day uh, to play against a, a bunch of local teams so uh the idea being that Chelsea although the parent didn't want Mason Mount to go and, and train with them in their pre academy just yet. They, they they were banking on their ability to get him through the door and wow him with their facilities and their their methods to be able to kind of turn the boy's head. Um, so that's that's what happened. They went up to this tournament three weeks later. Um, they won it. Ball Hunt won the tournament, beating out a lot of the the top local teams. And at that point, they invited Mason and a couple of other boys from that team to train with them every Friday as part of their pre academy. And uh, yeah, as 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 Tony Mount said, you know, at that point they had him. <laughs> and he couldn't really say no because he'd been there, he'd seen it. Um, and yeah, that was for the next um, however many years he was he was carting him up and down the motorway to take him to the training at Cobham. 
once a week. Uh, so yeah, that that is an interesting insight into um, not just how they spot the players and, and how far they cast their scouting there, but also how they get them through the door and how they over, overcome any obstacles uh, that, that, that uh, might be presented by reluctant parents. Um, so yeah, you certainly um, wouldn't say it was a, a, a mean trick or, or an underhanded or uh, certainly no, no rules were broken, but it was a bit of a wily little trick of the trade to get him through the door. Hmm. And, and, and Tony Mount was also keen to point out that once they were there, they were very happy to be there. Uh, they they love Chelsea, always have loved. And that's why when the time came at, at eight years old, Mason chose Chelsea to, to sign with over Portsmouth, the, the club he grew up supporting because they were, you know, they took such good care of him. Um, Guys like Michael Beale was a big part of his development. He's at Rangers now as part of Stephen Gerrard's staff. Um, he was also uh, he also worked with Trent Alexander Arnold and, and others at Liverpool. Uh, so yeah, he would be in terms of um, the key coaches in his development. He's certainly one of them, and um, they did they, you know, they felt they did such a good job with him that the the little <laughs> the kind of the little trick they used to get him through the door was pretty quickly forgiven. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, and and sort of reading through that, it was it was one which kind of it draws a little bit of a smile because it's like ah oh, okay yeah little trick of the trade yeah you've I've seen you've rejected us but we'll see we'll have the last laugh and obviously you know it wasn't as you say it wasn't an underhand tactic it wasn't um wasn't anything untoward and ultimately the final decision will have rested with with the Mount family and um it was yeah Chelsea just simply put it, put the opportunity in front of them and uh, and and obviously yeah the rest is history but i think with chelsea and, and sort of my experience of uh, speaking to people who've either been involved with the setup there or they know people who have it's always been that that chelsea's um you know they they they're good at that they're good at getting down to the you know they're good at knowing what will make people tick and why it's good to to and and how they can um persuade uh, whether it's reluctant parents or reluctant players, that this is the right place for them. Um, and I think it, it, it comes back to something I was speaking uh, to Jordan Jarrett Bryan about on, on that South London podcast. And it was that half the battle is understanding that these boys who are coming from different, who are playing in the same teams together, a, a lot of the time are coming from diverse backgrounds. Um, they're coming from, you know, different family setups and whatnot. And it's about catering to to the individual um, rather than a blanketed approach of, you know, this is how we're going to do it here and you're all going to abide by the same rules and whatnot. And it beams, I, I, I'd probably describe it as the Fabio Capello method um, of, of maybe being a bit more, uh, what's the word, regimented um, than, than, than what Chelsea do at the moment, which I, I think is, is, is quite good because they do cater to, to, um, to having different different lads from from different age groups and and, and different backgrounds and um, different settings um, in 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 the same same teams and whatnot and and I think that's that's one of the things that obviously becomes a lot easier when you have more coaches when you have more player liaisons and whatnot um, and obviously that's because you have a, a greater budget but it's it's something which I think has been has, has certainly been done right in that regard. 